Hi, I'm Walt and this is Delta Astrophotography. Have you ever tried to photograph a new target only to spend 30 minutes to an hour or more just trying to find the thing? That's still not it? Where are you, you elusive son of a bitch? Well, this happened to me recently when I was trying to photograph Comet Leonard. And then I discovered a new technique that helps me find any target very quickly and very easily. And I can do that using this red box thing, this, this box that looks like I pulled it straight off of Spider-Man. This is the ASI Air. I have the ASI Air Pro. The newest version is the ASI Air Plus with better Wi-Fi. These red box things are the best thing you can buy. Even, even better, better than, than cheeseburgers. cheeseburgers. What does that even have to do? Never mind. These are some of the best things you could ever buy for astrophotography. It's essentially a little mini computer that you can plug your camera and all your other accessories into and it controls them, but it does so much more than that. It can look at your photos and tell where you are in the sky, give you coordinates and tell you how far away from your target you are, allowing you to find it easier. And that's how we're gonna use it tonight. The ASI Air can come as a standalone product or bundled with an auto guide camera and guide scope, which is what I recommend because auto guiding along with this will really take your astrophotography up a couple of notches. If you can only afford the standalone version though, that's fine too. Now tonight's target is IC1396, also known as the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. Now normally on this channel, I don't use catalog names because astrophotography for beginners is already difficult enough without the long names and all the lingo. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to photograph IC1396 with a Radian 61, a ZWO, ASA 294, MC Pro, a Skywatcher EQ6R Pro, Sequence Generator Pro, and PhD2. The f I'm going back to bird photography. That being said, it's kind of important doing what we're about to do to learn the catalog names or just know what they are at the time because sometimes apps like Stellarium or the ASI Air don't use the common name and we have to know the catalog name. Now I chose this target because it's gonna be a bit of a challenge. For one thing, it's not gonna be high in the sky very long. I'm only gonna have a few hours to photograph it and I can't be wasting time trying to find it. Second, at around 7.30, a big nearly full moon is going to rise. I'm not gonna have a lot of time to photograph this at all before the moon starts to come up. Now I do have a filter in my telescope that will filter out a lot of that moonlight, but as a general rule, I don't like to do most of my photographing under a big bright moon. And finally, this target is in the constellation Cepheus, which for me is a very difficult constellation to see. It's between the constellation Cygnus and Cassiopeia, both of which are very easy for me to see but I just have a hard time finding Cepheus. And it's probably because I live in such a dark location that I just see stars between stars between stars, and that can make certain constellations difficult to find, but that's not a bad problem to have. So the way this is gonna work is we're gonna open up the app Stellarium on our phone, Stellarium Mobile, and we're gonna search for our target, and we're gonna see the coordinates of our target in RA and DEC. Then we're gonna go over to our camera and point it in the direction we think the nebula is in, just kind of ballpark it. Then use the ASI Air to take a test shot and hit the plate solve button. The plate solve is gonna tell us where we're pointed at in the sky by giving us our RA and deck coordinates. We compare those to the RA and deck coordinates we got from Stellarium and it's gonna show us how far off we are. And then we just make adjustments on our star tracker and take another test shot, plate solve it, and see if we've gotten closer or farther away. If we've gotten farther away, we just move it in the opposite direction. We keep repeating this method until the numbers are lined up fairly close and we'll have the nebula right in the frame and it works every single time. Now that might sound a little complicated, me just talking about it. So I'm actually gonna go out there and show you how I do it in the field. You'll be with me as I photograph this nebula for the first time. Setting all this up is incredibly simple. First, you just take a USB cable, the kind of USB cable that your camera uses, plug one end of the cable into your camera, and the other end into an open USB port in the ASI Air. And there you go, and that's just about all there is to it. Now keep in mind, these things do require power. So you might need some kind of uh, external battery if you're going out into the country, or you could get something like this to plug it in your car cigarette lighter, or if you're lucky enough to photograph from home, just run an extension cord outside and get an AC power adapter for your ASI Air. I know this video is about finding targets in space, but I just wanna mention that if you want to auto guide with your ASI Air as well, it's also super simple. You take the USB cable that came with your guide camera, plug it into the guide camera, and plug the other end into another open USB port on the ASI Air. Then you take your guide cable or ST4 cable that also came with your guide camera, plug it into the guide camera, 
and the other end into the guide port of your star tracker. Now everything's ready to go and all plugged in to the ASI Air. Now let's just take a quick look at the ASI Air interface. So when we first open up the ASI Air app on our phone or tablet, it might look something like this. For mount here at the top, since we're using a star tracker, we need to select on camera ST4. My scope is 275 millimeters, so I type that in right under main scope. My guide scope is 120 millimeters, I type that in, and it's already detected my camera and guide camera. Now if your camera's off, it might not detect it, so you better turn it on. And I'll just hit enter down at the bottom. And here we are in the main interface. If we go up to the top and click the camera, we can choose our ISO right here. But we're not gonna fool with any of that right now. Right now we just need to look at exposure down here in the bottom right. That's how we set up how many seconds we want our test shot to be, or our actual shot. We can do 10 seconds. Now we can press this round camera button all the way over here on the right to take our photograph. And when it's done, we'll hit this plate solve button on the left. That'll give us our coordinates. We can also go to the tools menu right here under plate solve, tap that, and press annotate, and it will tell us if there's a nebula or any deep sky target in our photograph. So even if you can't see your target, it'll tell you if it's there. Now let's go outside and actually do it for real. Now before we can do this method, we need to know the difference between RA and DEC, or right ascension and declination. It's pretty simple. Right ascension is this motion right here. It's what happens when you loosen the clutch of your star tracker. Now, declination is this motion right here. All right, it's about time to shoot and I've got the app Stellarium open. First thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is search for the Elephant Trunk Nebula. I'm gonna click the name down here on the bottom and now I see RA slash deck. Those are my coordinates. I'm going to need to keep those in mind when I'm plate solving later so I can find my target. For the rest of this tutorial, I'm just gonna put these on the bottom of the screen. Okay, now I've got my telescope pointed in the direction that I think the elephant trunk is in, and I don't have a lot of time. The moon will be coming up soon, and the elephant trunk is getting lower and lower. So let's get to taking test shots and plate solving them. Let's check my camera settings. I'm doing an ISO of 6400 and I've got an exposure of 10 seconds for now, and let's just go. All right, first test shot's done, and before I do any plate solving, I'm just gonna see if the nebula's in there already. I'm gonna go to Tools over here, I'm gonna tap Annotate. I've got some stuff in there, I've got the fireworks galaxy in there, but I don't see the elephant trunk, so let's go ahead and plate solve. And there's my coordinates. Let's compare them to what I was looking at earlier and make some corrections. And as you can see, the numbers were just a little off. I'm gonna start with correcting the right ascension first. My test shot said I was at 20 hours and I need to be at 21 hours. So that's the first thing I'm gonna to try to correct. Let's see if that's the right direction. Second test shot's done, let's hit plate solve. And now we're at 19 hours, so I went the wrong way. So let's go the other way. All right, I've moved my right ascension around a few times. Let's take another test shot. And let's plate solve. 2135, that's very close to the 2139 I'm looking for. So now I'm gonna adjust my declination. The plate solve said my declination was about 62 on the first number and I needed to get it to 57. All right, after adjusting the declination a few times, let's plate solve. And that looks very close to where we're supposed to be. Hit cancel, and I'm gonna go back to tools over here and hit annotate. And look at that, a little dot right there. I see 1396, that's it. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I can't even see it in my test shot, but this thing found it for me. That's amazing. So now I'm just gonna take some longer exposures and get it properly framed up. Looks like I've got it pretty centered in there and I can see a little bit of that red glow. Now what I need to do is that I have an auto guider. I'm just gonna turn that on by coming right here. I'm gonna hit the loop button. It's kind of hard to see here, but I'm just gonna select a little star on this screen. There we go. And I'm gonna hit this button right here. 
right there. Now it's just telling me that I have my declination turned off because this is a star tracker and that's what I want. So I'm going to hit confirm it's going to calibrate. And then after it's done, I will be guiding and ready to roll. All right, now the arrows have turned green. I am now guiding. So I'm going to go right here to these two little arrows in the corner, click those, go back here. All right, now I'm going to click on my camera icon right here. Drop my ISO back down to 1600, let's say. Okay, tap my screen. And I'm going to change my exposure time to 180 seconds. So now let's take our three minute test shot. All right, it's done. It looks a little dark, but that's because I don't have it auto stretched. Get ready. We're going to auto stretch now. And there we have it. That is a three minute exposure of the elephant trunk nebula. I can see the elephant trunk right there. I'm very, very happy. This was so easy to frame up. All right, now I'm just gonna change from preview to auto run. And I'm gonna click this little hamburger icon right here. Delete this, I don't want it. I'll change that name from California later. But for now, to set up my sequence, I'll just hit this right here. Choose light. I'm going to choose my exposure time to 180 seconds. And I'm going to repeat it 60 times. Hit OK. All right, now I've got everything set up in here. I'm going to click the back button right here. And it's ready to roll. I'm just going to hit this button right here. And it's going to shoot until I can't shoot anymore. So that's all there is to it. Well, everything turned out even better than expected. I'm so excited to show you my final image. But before I do, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, leave me a like and a comment and definitely subscribe for more stuff like this. I have no idea when this endless stream of clouds are going to end, but hopefully soon and I can get around to making more videos for you. As always, everybody, stay spacey, clear skies, and good night.